Hello folks, this is the video from the Angry Photographer. I'm going to do a video about uh, top recommended best value and or or the combination thereof most useful primes, Nikkor primes with one exception, the Tokina 100mm uh, 2.8. All of the rest of these are Nikkor but obviously I have to include the Tokina so these are top best primes and uh, and or also top best prime recommendations by me. Let's start off over here in the odd section. We're working our way from fisheye all the way over to 180mm. The uh, very couple of exceptions that are not included in this video and that would be like the 35mm which I am not very fond of but a lot of street shooters love the 35mm prime so if you complain about why I didn't include that that is just me personally. I find that I never use it, but a lot of street shooters love the 35mm Prime. Um, also not included, but would be recommended, um, would be the 300mm 2.8, but since a lot of you people are not into buying super expensive glass, I have not included the 300mm 2.8 fixed prime. That also is a top recommendation. But let's start over here on a lens that I didn't cover. A lot of people have, or you, you've talked about not being able to get currently decent prices on the 135mm 2.8 or the 135mm 3.5 prime due to my video, but obviously I'm not control of supply and demand. So let's talk about uh, the next recommendation, which I recently made a video on. That would be the 105mm 2.5 Prime. Um, infamously, famously sharp Nikkor Prime. And let's talk about a lens I have not talked about before. A little budget lens. Extremely sharp. Give it a high recommendation. If you find one of these, grab it, especially if you can find it for a deal. That is the uh, Nikon. E series. It's a 100 millimeter 2.8. Nice little lens. Let's compare it in size to the 105 millimeter 2.5. Nice stubby little short lens. Extremely sharp. Now 1970s uh, version of budget is today's uh, version of ultra high quality. So the reason that uh, it doesn't say Nikkor on the front of this lens is because it was a Nikon cut. Just a few corners in the production of this lens but it is still supreme quality lens so if you find a uh, Nikon uh, series uh, E-series the 100mm 2.8 you should grab it it's an awesome lens so let's start work our way over here from wide to tele uh, top recommendation not including the 16mm which is rather expensive lens you can use this DX 10.5mm fish eye it's a DX lens, but you can use an APS-C crop sensor mode on any FX camera. I do not recommend this on one FX camera. That would be the Nikon D700 because in crop sensor mode, uh, the megapixels are a little low, but it's still perfectly fine. So instead of buying the extremely expensive uh, Nikkor 16mm, um, since they're fisheye shots, and we're not talking about blowing up a gigantic print, typically a fisheye shots, so they're great for weddings, recommend the purchase of the 10.5mm Nikkor fisheye. Uh, next up the line, um, I'm going to do a video review, another video coming up soon. Top recommendations in the 20mm category, unquestionably, in my opinion, and in the opinion of a lot of other professional shooters, the most important prime wide lens to own would be a 20 millimeter lens. This is the 20 millimeter f2.8, still a current production lens. You can typically find these three three hundred and fifty dollars used as an autofocus D series lens. Uh, my favorite, however, because it's short, stubby, and it's built like a little tank. Although unfortunately, it's slightly rare. Highest recommendation, even a little bit sharper than the 20 millimeter D or the 20 millimeter AI lens, which is also a current production lens. However, it is six hundred dollars. The manual version of this 20 millimeter uh, 2.8D. This is the Nikkor 20mm 3.5. Sharp as hell. It's my favorite little lens. It's built like a tank. It's short and stubby. Produces excellent results. I absolutely love the dog piss out of it. I wouldn't give it up even at gunpoint. Moving on to 50mm category. Obviously top recommendation is the quote unquote cheap Nikkor 50mm pancake 1.8 lowest distortion at f1.8 of any other Nikkor lens just awesome we know all know about 50 millimeter pancake a second and third recommendation instead of the f1.2 I cannot give it the highest recommendation since it only half a stop uh, faster than the Nikkor 1.4 typically I can grab a Nikkor 1.4 like this for 70 80 bucks typically a hundred dollars in minty shape 
and this is a top value ultra fast uh, uh, Nikkor 50 millimeter prime. I obviously love the pancake 1.8, um, but if you need a faster 50 millimeter, so instead of spending $400 on a used 50 millimeter f1.2, you should for $100 one fourth as much, only one half a stop slower. Grab the Nikkor 50 millimeter f1.4. Now, uh, top recommendations is they usually snag these for 40, 50, 60 bucks. Perfectly fast enough. One of Nikon's toughest damn lenses ever made. I could take this lens and throw it like a baseball down a concrete hill, and I'm just about willing to gamble a thousand bucks that even though it'd be ugly at the end of the road, it would still be working. That is the Nikon. Nikkor uh, 50mm f2 lens. Snag it really cheap. People are like, oh, why would I have an f2 50mm? You know, everybody wants, you know, super fast, which they don't need. Bunch of glass lust. You know, I don't need a 1.8 or 1.2 or 1.4. This lens is awesome. Got several of them. This is actually, uh, love the pancake, obviously, for many obvious reasons. I've stated it over and over again. But love this lens. is the best value. Built like a tank. Uh, excellent, uh, Excellent uh, coma, excellent uh, uh, lack of distortion, and you snag it really, really cheap, and most of the time they're in awesome condition. That's a 50mm Nikkor um, F2. Now, next in line would be my only other lens wide prime that I recommend below 50mm. That's just me personally. That is the Nikkor 24mm 2.8 D lens. You could snag this typically very cheap. Like I said, some street shooters love 35mm, but I am not typically a street shooter, so the one lens I have left out of this video review is the 35mm Prime Nikkor, which I probably should have included, but I didn't because I personally don't like it. I, it, it collects dust on my shelf. So this is the AFD 24mm Nikkor. Wonderful, sharp little prime. And the Swiss Army Knife, ta-da! Awesome for FX or DX. It just kicks ass. It'll make you happier than a worm in a giant pile of poo. I've got three of these lenses. It's the cat's ass, the bee's knees. It is silk, sex, and sugar. Everybody should own one. It doesn't matter if you got FX or DS camera. It's the AF Micro Nikkor 60mm. It is the Swiss Army knife because you can use it, obviously, as a macro lens. Don't let the lack of a lot of glass in the front there fool you. It is a heavy, dense little tank of a lens. Perfect for reproduction, perfect prime lens, perfect macro lens. It is just kick ass. Not owning one of these lenses, I almost consider a sin. I don't give a damn if you got an FX or DX camera. Don't get the G version, only get the D version of that. So, moving up the line, I'm going to do an 85mm shootout review and uh, tell you why Ken Rockwell is smoking crack. Ken Rockwell, uh, when he started uh, doing reviews on 85 millimeters, for some reason, uh, he just he was just smoking crack. He's just he's just crazy. He's uh, dead wrong about uh, quite a few things. So, top recommendations: best optical precision is uh, well, it is plasticky. It is the one the 85 millimeter 1.8 G lens is optically superior to every other 85mm including the much 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 more expensive 85mm f1.4 so next lens in the line to be purchased you can snag one typically for about 300 bucks and that would be the D, the D only there's a non-D version check out my other video on the 85mm so I talk about what's the difference between the D and the non-D 85 they both look identical except for a, a slight difference uh, best recommendation here, 85mm 1.8 D lens. My favorite, however, and it's not really that hard to find, I'm going to talk about it in the other video in more detail, would be this short little stubby tank with the silky, sexy, uh, sexy smooth action. Sharp as hell, just absolutely love the dog piss out of it. It's just awesome. Nikon should still produce this, but don't. It's the 85mm F, uh, yeah, excuse me, F2, 85mm F2. I love it. I've got a couple of these. I use them all the damn time. It is just awesome. Sharp as hell and typically cheap as hell. Try to grab an 85mm F2. I don't think I need to talk about the Tikina 100mm. I mean, I've talked endlessly about this lens. This is silk, sex, and sugar. It is the cat's ass. It is just freaking awesome. You know, there are very few off-brand. Not that I'm a Nikon fan, Nikon boy fan. I mean, I'll recommend whatever's best. I don't give a damn if it says Nikon on it or not. 
people like, oh, everything you got's an icon lens, that's all you recommend is an icon. Yeah, generally the case, but that doesn't mean that I'm a Nikon fan. It's what, whoever makes the best, okay? It's all about the image, okay? So that's why top recommendation here, probably top one or two, three uh, lens recommendations here would be this lens, the Tekina 100mm Macro 2.8 ATX. Awesome, awesome. There's uh, Most of Tekina's uh, zoom lenses for Nikon, by the way, are piles of crap. Um, the 1116 is good, but uh, as far as talking about zooms, you know, don't ask me a lot about uh, Tekina zooms because basically they all suck ass except for their 1116. But this lens is magical, it's awesome, it's kick ass, it's pure sex, silk, and sugar. Um, I don't know if I need to talk about the 135mm anymore. I've talked endlessly about it. This is 135mm 2.8, and obviously, your little sister cousin, five elements here, four elements here. The 135mm 2.8, 135mm f3.5, awesome, silk, sex, and sugar, basically one of the best lenses Nikon ever produced. I'm so sorry for the prices have jacked up on eBay due to my videos, but I am not in control of supply. Ow! So, moving on, last but not least, the wonderful, sexy, beautiful, lovely, you could typically find these until I started making these videos, the 180 millimeter prime, oh my god, oh, oh, um, these are generally pretty cheap, although unfortunately my videos seem to have affected the price on uh, the used ones of these, still a current production lens, although it looks slightly different now, it is the exact same lens, it is freaking awesome, typically you can find these cheap, uh, I found them for three, four hundred dollars all day long. The price might have gone up recently due to my videos, which I have heard and have seen that that is the case. So, these are my top prime recommendations. Awesome all around, awesome value. Let's run them down real quick. Fisheye 10.5 millimeter, 20 millimeter 2.8, 20 millimeter 3.5, 50 millimeter pancake 1.8, 50 millimeter. F1.4, 50mm, F2, built like a tank, one of Nikon's toughest lenses ever made, awesome. Okay, 24mm, 2.8, the Swiss Army knife of pure freaking awesome 60mm macro, Nikkor, D series, okay, D series only. And here we move on to top 85mm recommendation, 85mm F2, 85mm D. 1.8, 85mm G, the most optically awesome, yet obviously it is plasticky, but, uh, you know, what are you planning on doing with it? Nailing barns up with it or something, using it as a hammer? Um, the super awesome, super sexy, uh, uh, just cannot be beat by anyone or anything, and the only non-Nikon lens here, and probably top recommendation, the Tekina 100mm f2.8, talked about it endlessly for obvious reasons. The super sharp, sharper than make your uh, privates drop on the floor and roll in the gutter, the 105mm f2.5 Nikkor. Awesome, the lens that took the world's most famous photograph, the Afghan girl. And the new lens that I'm, I'm just introducing to you, the cheap Budgetel, yet still built awesome as hell, 100mm uh, f2.8 E-Series. So thanks for watching. If you like this video, you can always drop me a buck or two or tell me to go screw myself or what deep cliff or ravine to jump off of. And I am going to go drink some more coffee, but remember, uh, while I might be amped up on coffee, this decision is extremely logical, very sensible, and well thought out. So. And uh, I hope you like these videos and let me know what other sort of videos you're interested in me making. I've got a very long list, I guarantee you, whatever it is you're probably thinking of telling me I'm making a video, I've already got it on the list as uh, needing to be made. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you later and shout out to all you people including Marco. Hey Marco, shout out to Marco. Okay, and shout out to the crazy Viking, crazy Viking.